I'm astrologer and life coach Penny Dix. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Welcome back if you're a regular visitor. And if you've not been here before, then a big welcome to you. And I would love it if you would subscribe. So today I'm bringing you one of my short heads up videos for the sign of Pisces, my oceans of emotions. And that's whether you're sun in Pisces or whether you are the rising sign in Pisces. So how is February going to unfold? Well, in general, it's actually going to be quite a smooth and easy month. There is quite a lot of activity in your sign, so I will come to that in a minute. But in general, it's going to be a fairly plain sailing month. The only thing is that we have to look out for when things are smooth is that we don't kind of overlook sort of uh, the fire that needs stoking. You know, you're a water sign, so you're not particularly aware of, of that fire that needs stoking, but you must make sure there's enough water in your ocean to float your boat. So that's really quite important. So don't sit back and just expect everything to unfold. We always have to keep consistently, actively working towards our goals. So we start the month, of course, with the sun in your 12th house, Aquarius. Now, this is the part of your chart for inner reflection. And I think it sees you just sitting back and, you know, I think we can get a little bit like this before our birthdays. And you've got, of course, the sun will move into your sign on the 18th. And then it, it, it's like you come out into the light. And I think there's a whole kind of recognition that comes when we realize we've done yet another rotation around um, the sun, that it's, it's, it's quite an enormous thing, really. It's quite, quite amazing. But whilst the sun is in your 12th house, it's time to just reflect and just pause and, and, and think about things that, that matter to you and how you can make them become richer and more of a rich part of your psyche. So there's one tricky aspect towards the beginning of the month, which, which is on the 4th, when we have the sun in this part of your chart, Aquarius, making a square, which is challenging, to my big outer boy, Uranus, which is the planet of the unexpected and of shocks, and it's in Taurus, and it's in your third house of communication. And I think something gets said that throws you off balance. It's something or someone in your local community. So just be mindful of that, be aware of that. Don't let it throw you off balance because the next day on the 5th, we actually have a full moon in Leo. Now, also that day, Venus, our planet of love, relationship of the feminine is in your sign and Venus is making a square to Mars which is in Gemini which is your fourth house now Mars is our god of energy action assertion and the masculine now there's something about this conflict between the the, the feminine and the masculine and it's being played out at home and I just think you have to be mindful of that and I think it all links in with this energy of Uranus in the 3rd on the 4th of February, where we've got this kind of unexpected things get said. And it just throws everything into a little bit of kind of a mini kind of um, chaos. And this full moon, of course, is in the part of your chart to do with your working routine, how you, how you let your routine play out and all the little jobs that you have to do, the the things that you have to take care of, the, you know, service to others, parents to look after, kids to look after, anything that kind of keeps you busy. And so this full moon is almost like saying, I need a rest. I can't keep on at this pace. I really do feel Pisces. It's going to be so super helpful when our lovely big outer boy Saturn that everyone's so scared about moves into your sign. My goodness, it's going to give you the structure and the boundaries that you so desperately need. It really is going to be 
super helpful. But let's also look at our planet of communication, Mercury, because Mercury is in the part of your chart to do with your kind of hopes and wishes. It's Capricorn. And this, of course, is where Pluto is. And on the 10th, Mercury and Pluto, our planet of transformation, my big outer boy, who's a dwarf planet, but I still think he's probably quite a big planet compared with what we would see if we got up close and personal, compared, say, to our moon, I'm sure Pluto is massive. Anyway, enough of that. And so <laughs> Mercury is going to be conjunct Pluto. This is constructive, transformative talk for projects that you're working on. Things are going to shift after that full moon. After you make some space for yourself, Pisces, things will start to shift. And then Mercury will actually move into your 12th house Aquarius on the 11th of February. And there you've just got to be mindful, because remember Saturn's still there as well. You've just got to be mindful that you don't get into too much self-talk or um, overthinking things or even inflation in whatever way is not good for you. Make sure you use the energy of that sixth house to, to bring somebody in who can help you reflect more on anything that is concerning you. Let's also look again at Venus, which of course is in your first house, it's in your sign. And Venus is conjunct Neptune. And this, of course, is your ruling planet and is also in your first house. And this is on the 15th of February, which is interestingly the day after Valentine's Day. I just think that you're going to be feeling quite radiant, quite glowing. It may be that you have kind of actually just have some nice, nice experiences with with those that matter to you, that people that you would like to be in your life and be special, that you have some nice kind of sense of communication and feeling. And then, of course, Mercury is actually going to move into, sorry, I'm talking about Venus. Venus, I, I jumped up a line. Venus then moves into Aries on the 20th, and it'll be in your second house of finance, <clears throat> and having Venus here is going to be super good for you because it's going to see your money bank, your piggy bank filling up because Venus will always bring in abundance into that part of your chart. But of course, we can't finish your um, monthly look at February without talking about the new moon. And the new moon, of course, is a Pisces new moon. New moon, new you. I think you're going to be making some very definite decisions with this new moon. I don't think you're going to be running ragged for anyone anymore. I think you're going to really be picking up on this Saturn energy that is just hovering on the threshold to come into your sign. And you're thinking, I'm going to be one step ahead of the game. I'm going to start setting those boundaries now and not letting people take advantage of me, run me ragged, however much you love them. You know, Pisces, you've only got so much empathy. Please give some of that sympathy and empathy to you first. And then maybe you'll actually have some fuel in the tank to help others. So there we go, Pisces, my lovely oceans of emotion. And thank you so much for joining me for your uh, February horoscope. And please remember to like, comment and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.